Welcome to the American Story. Stories about all the things that make America the country we know and love. It's important that the American Story reaches as many people as possible. If you haven't done so already, please download a podcast app to your phone or tablet. Then subscribe to the American Story on that app. It's free. The app subscriptions push us up in the podcast rankings. The higher we go up, the more people are exposed to the American Story, the more people that will download for the first time, and the podcast grows and grows. And we have been growing, so I want to say a big thank you to all of our subscribers. This is Chris Flannery with the Claremont Institute. I call this one, God's in His Heaven. 2020 seems to have spread like a virus into 2021. A third of the way through the year, and still across the country, citizens bludgeoned into isolation, locked in their homes by the latest mandate, huddled around computer screens and cell phones hour by hour, awaiting announcement of the next tribulation. It was too much to take in, disorienting to the soul. We fled in desperation to the free state of Florida. Here this morning, on the seaside of Amelia Island, the locals, breakfasting on the balcony at Tortuga Jack's, occupy our minds solely with anticipation of sunrise at 6.29 anti-meridium, Eastern Standard Time. Almost a minute earlier than yesterday. Almost a minute later than tomorrow. For a few months now, you could feel for yourself the days growing longer minute by minute, the southerly sun returning slowly day by day from the limit it reaches every year on the winter solstice, the longest night of the year, a good night to get married on, but the beginning of what in some ancient cultures was known as the famine months. You felt part of the big slow swing as the northern hemisphere of the earth tilted to its furthest angle from the sun and began tilting back day by day until we reached the summer solstice at the other end. Not the hair-raising 24-hour news cycle. The cycles of the year, an end and a beginning that keep returning and nourish the soul. Morning twilight, the time between first light and sunrise, is the treasure. Generally, you will get a hint of the coming sun a half hour or so before it inches over the horizon. If you're a West Coast American like me, experiencing the sun coming up over the ocean and going down over the country behind you takes some getting used to. But if you make your way to the salty pelican for the catch of the day as the sun descends over the lazy backwaters, you know that a few hours later, folks will be there on the California coast, watching the sun go down over the other ocean. After it has made its way once again across the fruited plains and the purple mountain majesties, from sea to shining sea. What you see at sunrise depends altogether and exactly on where you are and on how the changing declination of the sun changes the angles, lengths, and shapes of the shadows of everything between the sun and you. So if you're a regular at Tortuga Jack's, you know which palm tree will give shade to the corner table as the sun rises on Memorial Day. If you're there at the same table at the end of a clear day around the same time of year, looking out at the darkness deepening on the eastern horizon as the sun goes down behind you in the west, you will see Orion coming into focus, slightly to your right, already two or three fingers above the horizon, at infinite distance, rising in its cosmic arc to cross above the country and the world in the coming night and return again tomorrow. Glance up and to your left, and there is Cassiopeia, always facing the Big Dipper, both of them circling forever around the North Star in their more modest orbit. The moon has its own blessed cycles. Waxing crescent, waxing and waning gibbous, waning crescent. On the best days, you can see the sun coming up as the moon is going down. The tides, another vital local reality, are governed mainly by the moon. The lunar day is about 24 hours and 50 minutes long, because as the Earth spins, the moon orbits around us in the same direction. High tide comes twice a day, every 12 hours and 25 minutes. Low tide comes twice a day also, every 12 hours and 25 minutes. 
So high tide and low tide are separated by six hours, 12 and a half minutes. You want to know these things for practical local reasons, like planning a seaside marriage proposal. At high tide, there can be a very thin strip of beach to walk on in the morning twilight. Maybe you even have to tread in the soft sand of the dunes for a short stretch. At low tide, you have up to 50 yards of smooth, hard-packed sand between you and the surging and ebbing water's edge. You know the fishing is good when the pelicans are diving into the sea like prehistoric kamikazes, tucking their eight-foot wingspans and diving at 40 miles an hour time after time, natural airbags built into their beaks buffering the impact on the surface of the ocean. Old men stand at the water's edge and marvel at the spectacle. It's an ancient mystery that is always young. When the pelicans aren't dive-bombing, they are skimming the waves in briefs with infallible precision. Amelia Island lies at about 30 degrees north latitude in the northeastern corner of Florida, measures 15 miles long by about 3 miles at its greatest width, It is the southernmost of a chain of barrier islands on the South Atlantic coast of the United States, known as Sea Islands. The island is bounded to the seaward by Sandy Beach, reaching out to the warm waters of the Gulf Stream, and to the landward by salt marshes, tidal creeks, and the Amelia River. In between, early morning and late afternoon sunlight filters through the Spanish moss lacing all the trees arched over canopied roads, meandering through the quiet neighborhoods. Its northern and southern boundaries are formed by the mouths of the St. Mary and Nassau rivers, whose fresh water meets the salt water of the Atlantic Ocean to ebb and flow with the tides. Life on Amelia Island over the course of five centuries has the distinction of having been lived under eight different sovereign flags, French, Spanish, British, Mexican, Confederate, American, and a couple too complicated to explain here. So the locals have had their distractions. But whatever the passing distractions, and at whatever American latitude and longitude you find yourself, the same blessed cycles surround you, with their eternal order and infinite variety, their nearness and their farness, their movement and stillness. And for at least a moment, if you pause to notice... You can feel that the poet Browning was on to something, and that God's in his heaven. All's right with the world. Thanks for being part of the American story. This is Chris Flannery with the Claremont Institute. If you'd like to learn more about these stories or how you might support them, please visit our website at www.theamericanstorypodcast.org. That's theamericanstorypodcast.org.